again. To start with the 0304 season and inflection points in the Galacticos project, the summer saw the arrival of Carlos Queros and David Beckham. David Beckham started life to Madrid brightly with a Super Cup win and an opening day goal in La Liga. Madrid were cruising in the league, playing spectacular football, and they were top by Christmas with convincing wins over Barcelona and Deportivo. By March, they had an 8 point lead over Valencia, the closest rivals, and looked set to win the treble. However, this is when the season took a turn for the worse. A Champions League quarterfinal exit at the hands of Monaco was followed by a Copa del Rey final defeat to David Villa Zaragoza. The impression slipped into La Liga as Madrid lost six of their last seven games, which featured games against Osuna, Real Sociedad, Barcelona, and Deportivo. Valencia took advantage of this collapse and made a strong comeback, winning games to finish as champions with a seven point lead over Madrid. The 03 04 season remains the best season in Valencia's history, thanks to triumphs in La Liga and in the UEFA Cup. Atleti almost suffered the same fate as Madrid in the 95 96 season. Atleti narrowly avoided relegation in the 94-95 season, which prompted his sale to make whole scope changes to the team and the coaching staff. He brought in Radomir and Tic, and the impact was immediate. Atleti began the season strongly, and by match day 25, Atleti had an 11-point lead over Barcelona and a 14-point lead over Valencia. The subsequent 11 games would see Atleti's form drop as they dropped points in several games, which saw Barca and Valencia cut the gap to 3 and 7 points, respectively. On match day 36, Atleti arrived at Akami with the possibility of losing the lead. A Caminero inspired move rallied Atleti to their best performance of the season as they won 3 1 at the Camden to bring the title a little bit closer. However, the following week would see them lose to Luis Aragonese's Valencia. Valencia then cut the gap to two points going into the final day of the season as Atleti dropped points at Tenerife. And this meant that Atleti needed to win in their final game against Albacete at the Vicente Calderon, and they did so with goals from Diego Simeone and Kiko. The La Liga title was accompanied by a Copa del Rey triumph in the club's only domestic double until date. Atleti failed to kick on from this La Liga win and had to wait 13 years to win the title again. And this was in the 13-14 season. The 13-14 season started with optimism for Atleti after a Copa del Rey final victory against arch rivals Real Madrid. It compensated for the loss of Falcao with the arrival of David Villa. Villa formed a strong partnership with Diego Costa. Atleti began in the first round like a tsunami, and their win at the Bernabeu signaled to everyone their intentions to win La Liga this season. They only lost once between August and February. After taking control of the championship in February, Atleti fell into a slump. A Copa del Rey final, a Copa del Rey exit, was followed by losses against Almeria and Osasuna. A draw in the Madrid Derby, however, marked the turning point in their season. Atleti began to win and took control of the title race after Madrid suffered back-to-back -back losses against Barcelona and Sevilla. The final game saw the big three struggle to get over the line. Barca dropped points against Atafi and Elche. Madrid dropped points against Valencia by the lead at Celta. Atleti lost to Levante. And in a home game against Malaga, Atleti had a chance to win the title, but the late really Caballero save prevented a coronation at the Vicente Calderon. Atleti would have to do it the hard way, going all the way to Pac Camp Nou and needing a point. Alex Sanchez opened a scoring for Barcelona, and Barca looked set to win the league. However, Diego Godin equalized with a header to win the title for Atleti, the 10th in their history. Barca are no strangers to final day heroics. In fact, three of the four titles won under Johan Cruyff were thanks to Tenerife and Valencia on the final day. The 91-92 season saw Madrid enlist Leo Benaca to bring down Cruyff's Barca. Benaca had had successful spells with Madrid in the 80s where he won three La Liga titles consecutively. His Madrid side led La Liga between match day 7 and match day 37. On the final match day, Madrid played against Tenerife, a side coached by Jorge Valdano. Valdano was a former Madrid player, and because of that, many expected this to be a comfortable win for Madrid. However, it was anything but comfortable. Madrid took an early two-goal lead in the first half. But despite this, Madrid were stunned as Tenerife scored goal after goal after goal to reverse the scoreline, and this effectively handed the title to Barcelona and led to the second of Leo Van Aca. Barca dominated the 1993 season and looked to brush up advances from Madrid and Depor. Madrid took control of the title race with three games to go, but faith would have it that they'll play Valdano Tenerife again on the final day. It couldn't be any different, could it? No, it wasn't. This time, there was no drama, as Tenerife won comfortably and handed the title to Barca again, the second title Cruyff won on the final day. The 93-94 season was Depor's turn to suffer Cruyff's final day in Merhol. 
Depor was promoted to La Liga in the 91 92 season and took the league by storm under Arsenio Glaciers. They finished third in the previous season with a team filled with stars such as Fran, Bebeto, and Mara Silva. Depor assaulted La Liga in the 93 94 season. Depor led the league between match day 14 and 37. On the final day of the season, Depor had to play against Valencia while Barca played against Sevilla. Barca comfortably dispatched Sevilla, but in the Depor game, it was 0 0 going into the final moments of the game. In the final moments, there was a penalty. However, Depor's main penalty taker, Bebeto, was off the field. Mara Silva didn't want to take the penalty. As a result, Mirsad Jukic stepped up to take the penalty, but he missed, and the Valencia keepers celebrated wildly. And this effectively ended the title to Barcelona. This incident led to a rivalry between Depor and Valencia that continued into the 2000s when both teams were at Gazina. The Depor story does have a happy ending, but reformed Depor side under Javier Herrera got the chance to fight for the league in the 1999-2000 season. The incorporation of Roy Mackay did wonders for the, for the club as Roy Mackay's goals allowed the club to have a fighting chance. Depor started the season spectacularly with big performances in big stadiums against big clubs like Atletico, Barca and Madrid with Mackay's goals playing a huge impact in those wins. However, as the season progressed, the goals of men four would come back to haunt Depor as they dropped points all over the place, especially away from home where they were weaker. Zaragoza and Barca took advantage of Depor's weakness and rallied to make the Saturday successful. However, this time, there was no final day voodoo as Depor went on to beat Espanyol thanks to goals from Donato and the mention of Roma Kai. And Depor won their only league in their history. Depor won the league with the lowest point tally for a champion, but they did it in a year where three of the top five were Champions League semi finalists. We go to the 2021 season. As I see, had a transitional year in the 1920 season, but signed the final piece of the puzzle, Luis Suarez. Luis Suarez came as a free agent. Thanks to his goals and the form of Marcus Llorente, John Felix, and Lamar, Atleti had an almost perfect first round. The win against Barca was a sign of their intentions. The only blemish to their first round was the loss against Real Madrid. In match day 21, Atleti were 11 points out of Barca and Madrid, 12 out of Sevilla. But the gap was cut short with ties against Atafe, Celta, and Betis, and losses to Levante, Sevilla, and Athletic didn't do any help. Three points separated at the top four with five games to go. Sevilla's loss to Athletic the following weekend practically ruled them out of the title race. Sevilla, however, did play Kingmaker as they held Real Madrid on a weekend where the top four all squared up. The drama didn't end there as Athletic nearly threw the league away on the penultimate day. Athletic fell behind to Osuna with 13 minutes to go, but had an epic comeback with goals from Lodi and a final goal from Suarez as Athletic fully entered the Suarez zone. The final day also brought drama as Athletic fell to an early goal but they never say that to sudden comeback to win the title. Luis Suarez, discarded by Barca, scored the final goal that gave Atleti the title. They won the title in the most Atleti way, suffering till the end, game after game. The 6 7 season brought similar drama and lives in the memories of Madrid, Barca and Espanyol fans. In 2006, Florentino Perez left Madrid after his late Galacticos project failed. Ramon Calderon, the new president of Real Madrid, brought in Fabio Capello to end Madrid's trophy draw. Madrid took time to adjust Capello's methods and struggled to keep up with Barca and Sevilla in the first parts of the season. By Christmas, they were rocked with the news that Beckham was departing for LA Galaxy. Beckham was frozen out by Capello. After a Champions League exit, Madrid looked set for the offense but turned the corner in a 3-3 draw at Camp Nou. After the draw, there was a media campaign where the players urged the fans to support the team to win their last of the win, their burning nail. The campaign reinvigorated in Madrid, who began a run of victories, playing spectacular football, showing character to come back from impossible situations like being 3-1 down to Espanyol, but winning 4-3. Much of this was due to the reinstatement of David Beckham, who formed a fierce partnership with Ruud van Nistelrooy. Madrid took control of the league and were headed for the title. Madrid, Sevilla and Barca had tricky fixtures and a penultimate game as all three looked to win the title. Madrid travelled to Zaragoza. Sevilla travelled to Mallorca while Barca had the Catalan Derby. In the dying moments of the match day, Madrid were losing 2-1 while Barca were winning by the same scoreline. And then, like magic happened, Ruud van Nistelrooy scored and he equalised for Madrid and within seconds, almost like clockwork, Rata Mundo did the same for Espanyol. And this meant Madrid had destiny in their own hands going into the final day of the season. On the final day of the season, Madrid had full of drama, like usual. They conceded early and then they were on the back foot. But luckily, a Reyes inspired comeback 
Real Madrid to victory and they won La Liga in the most Hollywood finish of them all. And this is why this season is so spectacular in the 21st century. To find out the best season in La Liga history, we go to the 20th century. The 88th one season had everything. Reference scandals, the kidnapping, crazy title race, and a new champion. The biggest news was the kidnapping of Chini, the best player in Spain at this point, and Barca's only hope to win the title. He was kidnapped for 24 days, which was a shock to Barca's system, and during his departure, Barca were unable to pick up wins with regularity to compete for the league. Aside from what happened to him, on the field, Atleti began the season in fantastic form and led the league for 23 match days. They had fierce competition from six teams at one point, and the pressure got to them. Atleti failed to win any of their last seven games, and they lost to Real Madrid in the final stretch, knocked them out to the title race. The title was going to be between Madrid and La Real, a repeat of what happened in the previous season. In the Sub-1980 campaign, La Real almost won the whole season unbeaten. However, on the penultimate match day, they lost to nine men Sevilla to give Madrid the edge and the title race. They hoped a similar thing wouldn't repeat itself this time in the 881 season. The final weekend of the 881 season is one of Spanish football folklore. Juanito promised to kneel from the center circle to the dressing room if Madrid won the title. Madrid needed to win a the lead and hope La Real lost to Sporting Hion to win the league. Madrid won comfortably in the league and news began to go to the La Real were losing in Gijon with the game in stoppage time. Madrid players began celebrating wildly as they thought the title was won and Juanita even started doing a screen crawl. But with 30 seconds to go, La Real still the lead and Zamora latched up to a loose ball and scored in the back of the net to give La Real the title. La Real players celebrated. Madrid were in disappointment and they will go on to lose the Champions League final to complete a double of disappointment while La Real began a mini era of vast dominance in Spanish football. Do you agree with the list that I've given below? If you agree with it, let me know. If you disagree with it, let me know in the comments below. And please, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and smash the subscribe button.